Hello, and welcome back to A Gross of Physics. This is day four, where we're going to discuss significant figures and conversions. Now, significant figures are the number of digits made by a measurement. And we've learned many ways to count the number of significant figures in other courses. This should be a refresher for many of us. Now, the way we determine the number of significant figures in a measurement is by counting the number of digits that matter. Any digit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 always are significant. So they always count in a measurement. Zeros are often used as placeholders. So zeros count in certain situations. Now, when there's a decimal point, any zero on the right matters. Any zero to the right of the digits that are significant count. Also, if a zero is sandwiched between two significant digits, it also counts. So for example, if we have the number 120 with no decimal point, the rightmost zero is not significant. It's just a placeholder. So that would have two significant figures. If we have 120 with a decimal point, so 120 then decimal point, then you would have three significant figures. On the other hand, if we have the sandwich rule, which is what I like to call it, when the zero is sandwiched between two significant numbers, the digit 102, all three are significant. The one and two are always significant. The zero is significant because it's in between the one and the two. So 102 has three significant figures. And then finally, the number 1010, the, if you go from the left to the right, 101, the zero in between the two ones counts, but the rightmost zero does not because there's no decimal place. So what I'd like to do is look at a couple of sample problems. So if you could look at the following four numbers and tell me the number of significant figures, I'll give you a minute. We have the numbers 15.02 two oh meters point zero 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 nine oh one millimeters five point one four times ten to the four kilograms and two hundred thousand miles now the top one fifteen point oh two zero every digit matters the zero in between the five and the two matter because of the sandwich rule and the zero on the right matters because of the decimal point. For point zero 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 nine oh one, only the nine, zero, and one matter. The rest are placeholders. That could be rewritten as nine point oh one times ten to the negative one, two, three, four, five to the negative five millimeters. Now we probably wouldn't write that, we'd probably use a different prefix for that. But if we were to write it with the digits that are there, it would be 9.01 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 millimeters. 5.14 times 10 to the 4, the 5, the 1, and the 4 all matter, so that's 3. And then for 200,000 miles, only the 2 is significant. If there were a decimal place, then all of the zeros would matter. But since there's no decimal place, only the 2 counts, so that would be one significant digit. Now, we can use numbers that have significant figures and manipulate them. And we have mathematical rules that govern them. There are two different methods, and one is addition and subtraction, and one is multiplication and division. So, how do we deal with math and significant figures? If we have addition and subtraction, what we do is we express the final answer with the same precision as the least precise measurement. So what I do is I add the numbers together, and then we round to the least precise placeholder. So in the case that we have here, we have 12.87 centimeters added to 6.5 centimeters. Now the 12.87 is precise to the hundredths place, so the second placeholder past the decimal point. And the 6.5 is significant to the ten, uh, tenths place. So we add the numbers together in our calculator, and we end up with 19.37 centimeters. Rounding to the least precise placeholder gets us 19.4 centimeters. So the tenths place in this case is the value that we would round to. So when you add or subtract, you round to the placeholder where you have the least precise number. 
On the other hand, if we have multiplication and division, we multiply the numbers as normal and we have our answer expressed to the significant figures of the least precise measurement. It has nothing to do with the placeholder. So in our example in this, what we do is we multiply the numbers and then we round our answer to the number of significant figures of the least precise measurement. So 12.8 centimeters times 6.5 centimeters gets us 83.2 centimeters squared. Remember, the units multiplied square. If we divide, they would cancel. In this case, 6.5 has two significant figures. So that has two. The 12.8 has three. Two is the least number of significant figures, so our answer has to have two significant figures. So in this case, the 83.2 will be rounded to 83. 83 has two significant figures. So when you're doing math with, with numbers that have significant figures, we either do addition and subtraction or we do multiplication and division. Addition and subtraction, we round to the least precise placeholder. For multiplication, we round to the number with the least number of significant figures. So that's our two methods for dealing with significant figures. Finally, one of the most important concepts in physics is going to be conversions. We're going to have to convert numbers from the English units to the metric units. We're going to have to convert numbers within the metric units to their base units. So we may have a prefix involved. And in each case, it's going to involve different procedures. Basically, what we're going to do is write out our original number with the unit. And then what I like to do is I use conversion factors in fractional form. Now, if we remember from math class, numbers on the top of the fraction are multiplied across, and numbers on the bottom are also multiplied across, and then what we'll do is divide at the end. For units or variables, like in math class, you may have used x and y, but for units, it acts the same way. Any number on the top and bottom, or in this case, unit on the top and bottom, is canceled out. So what we'll do is we find the conversion factor that matters, and then we'll write that in a fraction. If we want to get rid of meters, we'll put meters on the bottom. If we want to get rid of centimeters, we'll put centimeters on the bottom. But some units have a numerator and a denominator. So for example, meters per second. We may have to get rid of the seconds that are originally on the bottom. So if we want to replace the seconds with something else, typically we want to keep seconds, but if we wanted to get rid of seconds and replace it with something else, we would then want to have the conversion factor where the seconds is on the top, and then the minutes or whatever we're looking for would be on the bottom. If there's multiple steps involved, we may use multiple conversion factors to get an answer. So we could have a string of the original unit in fractional form, and usually the original um, number will have the units only in fractional form and then we'll have our conversion factors string across to get our final answer. So for the example I have here we have 75.2 meters and we want it in millimeters. Our conversion factor is one meter is a thousand millimeters. So since we started in meters we're gonna put the meters on the bottom that's where the one goes. We'll put the thousand on the top that's where the millimeters are gonna go. Notice the meters will cancel and we'll be left with 7,000 I'm sorry, 75,200 millimeters. The metric system will basically be a situation where we'll just move um, decimal places to the right or left. Now, in the English unit, we'll have to find a conversion factor that's probably not based on the 10. For example, in this case, I have 25 feet and we want to find the inches. Well, 25 feet can be replaced by 25 feet over one. Now, and we want to get rid of the feet. So in our conversion factor, we'll put the feet on the bottom, one foot, and then we'll put the 12 inches on the top. The feet cancel, or in this case, the foot cancels on the, the right side, and we'll end up with 25 times 12, or 300 inches. Conversions can be done for the English to the metric system. It can be done within derived units. It can be done with base units. And what we're going to do is a number of sample problems dealing with conversions. At this point, um, we have all of our notes for the conversion section, for the significant figure section. I think it's time to do some practice problems. Thank you. All right, let's look at a couple of sample problems. First, we're going to convert 150 feet into meters. 
Now what's important to realize here is that the 150 feet to meters is the English to the metric units. And we need to know what the conversion factor is between meters and feet. And one meter is 3.25 feet. So, how are we going to set this up? What we're going to do is we're going to take the 150 feet and we're going to write it out. Then we're going to make a fraction that contains the conversion factor. Since feet are on the top, we want to put the feet on the bottom and we want to be left with meters. We use the one meter on the top and the 3.25 feet on the bottom. So, the feet will cancel and we'll multiply across the top 150 times 1 and we'll divide that by 3.25 and our final answer will be 46.15 meters. I hesitated because my calculator has a number of decimal places past that and I'm going to stick to the hundredths place. The next problem is all right, the next problem is 75 pounds to kilograms. Looking up the conversion factor, one pound equals 0.453592 kilograms. Probably a little too precise for our purposes here, but we'll use it. Now you write out 75 pounds set up your fraction, pounds is on the bottom, kilograms is on the top. Now remember LB is pounds. So 1.453592, a little too precise for my writing, and the pounds will cancel. Multiplying 75 times 0 0.453592 yields 34 0.019, I'm going to make it 0.02 kilograms. I'm going to box my answer, and that's it for that one. All right, this one is 4 miles to kilometers. So, we need to know the conversion factor between miles and meters. Well, one mi mile is 1,609 meters. When you run around the track, four laps around the track is a mile. Each lap is a 400, but the precise metric value for meters to miles is 1609. The starting gate and the ending gate may be slightly different if you're doing a full mile, but most times people use the metric mile, which is 1600 meters. But we're going to use 1609 here. Finally, you need to get to kilometers. So one kilometer is a thousand meters. If you look on your reference table you'll see that the K kilo is 10 to the third. So you have three zeros. So it's a thousand. Now when I do this out I'm gonna write four miles. And I'm gonna do two conversion factors. I'm gonna get rid of miles first. I'm gonna put it on the bottom. One mile, 1609 meters. Now I want to get rid of the meters. I'm going to put that on the bottom and kilometers on the top. 1,000 meters, 1 kilometer. Now if we go through, miles cancels, meters cancel, and we're left with kilometers. So now you're going to multiply 4 times 1609. I hit equal at that point. Then I'm going to divide by 1,000. And you get 4 miles is 6.44 kilometers. All right, our next conversion is two hours into seconds. And hours to seconds is one of the more confusing conversions for many of my students. A lot of times people will write 60 seconds as an hour, but remember, one hour is 60 minutes and one minute 
is 60 seconds. So the reality is if you go directly from hours to second, one hour is 3,600 seconds. So I can use either the two conversion factors or I could stick to the direct one two hours. I'm going to put hours on the bottom. One hour, 3600 seconds. Cancel the hours. Two times 3600 is 7200 seconds. And there's conversions from hours to seconds. We'll tackle a double conversion. We're going to go from 55 miles per hour to meters per second. Now when we write 55 miles per hour, it's really written as miles divided by hours. So this is going to be the way we write out miles per hour. The P means per, which is division in mathematics. So what are our conversion factors? One mile was 1609 meters and one hour is 3600 seconds. So what we're going to do is write 55 miles over hours and then do two conversion factors. One mile, 3600, whoop, one mile, 1609 meters, and one hour is 3,600 seconds. The miles will cancel, the hours cancel, and we're left with meters per second. This is called dimensional analysis. We're seeing what the units end up um, working out to be when we convert. So 55 times 1609, I'm going to hit equal at that point. Then I'm going to divide by 3,600, and I'm going to get 24. 0.58 meters per second.